Donnie even asked me, hey, you are going to do it. Do you go rest for the night? And I said, yeah, I'm good. Because I just started this morning. I woke up and I was like, okay, hey God, what are you thinking? And he just, he had me open my journal. Um, and uh, when we first started this study, or this, this Bible study, it really wasn't until Rob and Pete came um, that no, we never really talked about Moses. Uh, right? But, but you know, she kind of, we talked about Joshua and Caleb, which are, you know, part of Moses' group and all that, but, uh, and Rob preached about it. And it was funny because Shonda preached on it last week to an extent when she talked about when God said, you know, here I am. And was talking about the I am's, right? Well, I just opened my, my book and I just, it, it wasn't marked here, but I just happened to open it, not all the way to the beginning. Uh, and I'm probably in this journal about this far in. So I just kind of opened it. And, and open to the page of, of November 27, 2013, so not too long ago. Well, yeah, getting close to a year. But it was when I was doing a study of Moses. And I was like, wow, how cool is that? So I kind of read the first couple, and I was like, you know, and then God just put a couple things. So I'm just going to try to share with you what God shared with me uh, this morning and throughout the day as I was, as I was looking at some scriptures. Um, and we're going to be, we're going to start off in the book of Exodus. Uh, for those of you that want to follow along, um, it's uh, chapter 3, and we're going to start it in about verse 2. Um, I'm just going to read a little bit here, and... Uh, So, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. Let me kind of uh, prelude this for you. Basically, Moses uh, had fled Egypt. I think it was 40 years prior. Um, you know, he, he grew up in the house of Egypt. We all kind of know that story. He had, he had ran into a, um, a tribe. Let's say he married one of the daughters and he became a, a, a shepherd of the sheep flock. So he was out, you know, whatever, with the sheep. And comes across a burning bush, so that's where this kind of leads up, and, you know, I, I thought about this today, and I never really thought about it, I started thinking, you know, it doesn't say very much about if Moses was was really taught anything, or, or had a very good relationship with God between the time, because you remember, he grew up as an Egyptian in, in the house of Pharaoh, which there were many gods, okay, um, he knew who the God of his people were, you know, from what I could gather and read, but then there's not really too much explaining about did he gain a relationship with God or something. He knew that the, 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 the mountain was, you know, was where God kind of dwelled or whatever at that point. So, you know, understand this, this God was probably still foreign to him. Um, you know, so and it, as he's going up to see what this commotion is, this, this fire, um, it says, uh, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire. Now, if you understand that, what it's saying is he appeared, the, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. So a lot of us, just reading that quickly, might think like an angel appeared, right? But no, what it's saying is that God sent an angel in the form, or God himself, the angel in a form of a fiery bush. Okay? So a guy that does not know God that well, right? All he sees is he's walking, not knowing that it's God. He sees a bush. He's walking and he sees the bush and it's on fire and he notices that it's not burning. It's on fire, but it's not burning. Okay? So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. So, as he's walking, he sees the bush, and instead of keeping on walking, he turned and looked at it to see what it was. And it was at this point that God saw. So, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. It, it made me think, <coughs> I, I had some notes here, and I don't, you know, whether I heard a, heard a 
sermon on it one time or not, I don't know, but this is what I had written down from, from those verses. God did not call out to Moses until he saw that Moses turned aside to look. Moses did not just keep on walking past the burning bush. Start making me think about this, this class. I start thinking about the people that come to this class and the visitors that we've had and the new people that come and what happened last week and with, with, you know, with, with Sean DeVere in here preaching and what's happened this week with, with some families and stuff like that. And I start thinking of each individual person in here and, and, and kind of remember, you know, thinking back of where they walk, where, where they were when they first started coming to this group, where I see a lot of them now with God. Each one of them's had a calling from God. And, and the majority of you, all of you, have stopped and looked at the bush. And God has called you. Um, you know, so I just find that, find that, and, and, and you know, God is, he's, he's called you. And that's the whole basis of what I just want to talk to you a little bit about tonight is that we've all been called, whether it was before you started attending this group, but I can tell you since you've been attending this group, and the reason I start thinking about this is because I start thinking of all the wiles. You know, each while has had one specific um, uh, similarity. And they've all said something about when we started attending this group. God started doing something for them, with them, through them, or to them. Right? It was like, almost like this was our burning bush. Um, how, you know, I, I try to think back of when we first announced this at the LST. And, uh, you, you know... That was like, how many people were there? Maybe under 200, I don't remember, at that LST. But that was like the people getting to see up the mountain and see a bush burning but not being consumed on fire. And it wasn't until they came and sat in this room when God finally called them and said, Moses, Moses. So as I look at a lot of you in this room, you know, I know just from the wows that a lot of you have had a word from God since coming to this group and whatever it may be, you know. Um, so I wanted to kind of give you some encouragement tonight about stopping and not just passing that bush by, but stopping to look, and then God called you. Um, I, I think it's kind of neat, it's significant in verse 5 that uh, God told Moses to remove his sandals. He said, uh, you know, the ground that you're on is holy ground. Um, I, I thought to myself, maybe the sandals represent where he came from and not where he's going. Uh, I just found that very intrigued. So, uh, in verse 11, it said, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So God's calling to Moses was to tell him, hey, my people, I hear the, I hear the cries from my people in Egypt and I chose you to go and bring my people out of Egypt. And Moses is like going, whoa, you know, first off, hold up, I'm not even the one to do that. I escaped from Egypt. Why? Because I murdered someone. I had to boogie because they were going to kill me. You know, uh, second off, my own kin, your people don't like me. Um, you know, the, for those of you that don't know that story, um, I, I, I suggest that you go back and read the story of Moses. Um, and then he got, started going on to, to saying, you know, I've been living 40 years good. I got a wife, kids. I'm, you know, I'm married to this rich man's daughter. I'm doing pretty good looking, and I can't even talk right. You know, he started making all these excuses for when God called him that he couldn't go. Um, but God was very stern. And, and, and the calling on his heart was very stern, and Moses went. We all kind of know the story from there. And, and, and um, you know, so that's, my, my question is, where are you at tonight in your calling? Um, meaning, you know, when God calls you, Jeff's talking about faith, you know. I, it made me start thinking about Abraham. The, the, the most greatest name of faith is the man Abraham. When God called him, this man stepped out on faith so much, God said, go. He didn't even know where he was going. Abraham, when he first left his homeland, was, was a wealthy man. Uh, had a great home life, great big family. And God said, go to the place I show you. Here was a man that didn't even know where he was going, but God said, go, so he went. Until God showed him the place he was supposed to be. On down later on in the story, God said, hey, now you're 100 years old, above 100. you got the son I've been promising you for so long. It's going to be... Um, you know, the father of the many nations, bring him up to the mountain and sacrifice him. Abraham never did even question God. Led him up into the mountain, tied him down on the thing, even raised the knife, you know, um, and, and God supplied the lamb. That's some strong faith. You know, Jeff got to talk about faith a little bit in his message, you know. I mean, 
Think about the faith that is producing the things that's happening in our lives now. And the faith that Abraham, because of that faith, uh, Abraham, you know, if you read the story, was one of the most blessed men in, in ever, you know. So it's um, when, you, when you call, when you get called, how many of us, let's just think about this. I'm going to skip in over into Matthew, into Jesus' day. And uh, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 8, uh, let me get there real fast. First off, before I get there, let me let me just hear by, by maybe a raise of hands or amen. How many feel that they have been called? Amen. Amen. Exactly. You know. Um, so, chapter eight, verse twenty-two. I think it is. Let me see. Uh, no, actually, going back, uh, we'll start in verse eighteen. I'll just kind of read it. And when Jesus, does everybody have it over there? And when Jesus saw great multitudes about, him, multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Then a certain scribe came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Then Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Here was people that were hearing Jesus preach, seeing him do miracles, so they wanted to follow. They had been called by Jesus by Jesus. As a matter of fact, it, it's in, in there's a scripture um, there's a scripture in John uh, chapter 6 that says there uh, this is Jesus talking and he said, "Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father." Meaning those who come to me have been called by God. Okay? One way shape or form God has called them and they have been called. Here is Jesus uh, uh, these people that fell, they seen Jesus and they're like, yeah, I want to follow Jesus. This man's doing miracles. For whatever reason, they wanted to go and follow him. Um, but here's one that said, that had been the call, had been called. He said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. I really looked into that scripture today because when you first read that, you might think, well, gosh, that's kind of mean. Jesus didn't even want him to go bury his dad. It's not at all what the scripture is saying. It's, it's one of Jesus' parables, it's context. In those days, um, if, you know, let's just, if it was your, uh, uh, your oldest son, you have an inheritance when your fathers die. Uh, it could have been in the case of, uh, hey, Jesus, let me go and get my inheritance so that I know I'm good, and then I'm going to come follow you because i got enough money to do what i got to do. You know, wherever, Jesus, instead of, Jesus says, it's kind of funny, Jeff said it was a 12 check until you got let go of everything you need to let go of. You know, checks start coming in the mail, and then two hours later, there's a significance in that two hours later. God says, when you give it all to me and you put your trust in me, I got this. I can't have it when you want it. You know, I, I can't have it if you got it too. God don't want to work that way. God's got to say, let me have it. Here's this guy that's saying, hey, let me just make sure my finances are right. Let me get my pockets a little fat uh, so I can follow you. I'll be living good. And, and God says, stay there. That Jesus says, stay there. That's what you got to do, stay there. Because you're not putting your faith in me, um, you know there were some some other Christians in there. one said, "Let me go say goodbye to my to my family," you know. And, and basically Jesus said, "Hey, you know, let let the spiritually dead be spiritually dead. You know, come follow me. Have faith in where you're going with me." Um, and it, you know, so it made me think of where we're all at in our lives now, uh, where I'm at in my life, where you might be in your life. If we've all kind of agreed. I've seen a lot of amen, a lot of raised hands. When I said, if you felt called, right? And how many? And understand, I talked the last time I was up here. I talked about Marcus Place Ministry. Not everybody that's called is called to go to be a preacher. Is called to pastor a church. Not every, you know. Sometimes people they feel when they get that calling from God that 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 means I got to quit my job and go work at the church and volunteer. That's not always the case. I found this out today, sitting in my office. Guys, understand one thing about the car business is there's a lot of f bombs. Okay? And a lot of stuff like that. And I'm sitting there today and you know I do not I do not conform to that. Um, I just but I don't I don't judge them for that. What I do is I stay myself. I want Jesus to show through me. So we were talking today and and um, somebody just happened to look at me and you know I was talking about Bible study. I've been trying to just plug it this week and this and that. And they were like, oh that's kind of cool. And you noticing the cussing's kind of getting down lower. But me, and somebody says to me today, Shannon, I've never heard you say a cuss word. 
since you've been here. And I've only been there a week and a half, but it's like the language there. He, goes, I never, he said, I've never heard you cuss. And I said, it's because I don't cuss. And he said, why? And I said, well, a long time ago I decided that if I was going to, to be a good man, that my language had to change. If I wanted to be the type of man to be successful and I wanted to be a millionaire, I wanted, and let's say, a successful business owner and a millionaire, I wanted to talk like a millionaire. Uh, like like someone I'm getting ready to get a make a million dollar deal with is not going to want to hear F-bombs out of my mic to make that deal. So I started living that way a long time ago and I said, you know, when God gets in, in when God starts living inside you, you just don't talk like that no more. And so I went from a week and a half ago hearing Beep, 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 hey, beep, 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 you know, to I've heard, I, I haven't heard her quite so much. So it's the Jesus showing through me. It's the Jesus starting to affect people around me, you know. So that could be the ministry that people are called to, to be a minister in your marketplace, to let the Jesus show through you, okay. But what tends to happen if you go back, and I'll, I'll, there's a story back in Abraham's day when he left his hometown, his nephew went with him. Lot. And uh, at one time they separated. Lot and his wife went to a place called Sodom. Um, and happened to be it's a very, very evil city. Uh, a lot of bad stuff going on. Lot stayed true to God. Him and his family, you know, kept worshiping God. And one time God finally said, forget it, I'm destroying this city. Sent angels down to tell Lot and his wife, hey, get you and your family and get out. And do not look back. Okay? So they go and they boogie and, and, uh, Kind of goes back to where Lot. I got to talk about Lot's wife. Uh, Lot's wife, as they're leaving, you know, kind of wanted to maybe hold on. Let me go back and bury my. Let me go back and say goodbye because as they were leaving, um, Lot's wife looked back, and as soon as she looked back, she turned to stone and was sitting in her sand or whatever it was. She ain't here no more. Okay. Mm -hmm. and it was the reason that's significant is because when God tells you to go. He's telling you to go, stay forward. Uh, the looking back is not merely reflecting to evaluate the progress made since one decided to leave the world for you. So, you know, when we became Christians and we decided to follow God and, you know, we decided to change our life and we just started to walk towards whatever calling He had for us and each and every day allowed allow Him to show that to us more and more, um, we, we, we started leaving the world. Does that make sense? We started getting into the kingdom and leaving the world. Instead, it's like Lot's wife who looked back with a degree, a degree of longing to return to what she had left. Her life was literally on the line, and rather than being fully engaged in surviving, she placed a higher priority on life's lesser matters than on the greater one of the preserving her life through God's gift of protection. So she, and I, I just wonder how often I look back on my life, how many times I just kind of looked back on where I, you know, at, now I look back at where I came from to see where I've gotten. Before I looked back to kind of, my little brother's a prime example. Uh, at one time in his life, biggest heathen in the world, major gangbanger, all that, gave his life to Christ, uh, became a very, very powerful man of God. Um, but over the years, he, he always kind of looked back uh, to what he had given up. And when trials and storms and temptations start coming, um, he is now... Uh, Falling completely back into his old lifestyle, and it's ten times worse than what he ever was before. Um, you know, so he always had one foot back, and you know, once you take that first step, it's easier to just keep stepping. Before long, you're running all the way back, and you're ten times worse than where you were. And you know, Jesus has said um, at one point, uh, <clears throat> "Therefore, I have said to you that no one knows this is the thing." I don't even know if I can, but I, I thought about it today. But oh, Jesus, let me see. It's um, in no one who has what scripture is oh, that? Their hands on the plow. Yes, I want to say that's is that Luke? I think it's Luke, Luke 9 62. Let me double check. Luke 9, verse 62 says, Yeah, but Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. What Jesus is saying right there is, I've called you. You've answered. Come with me. Quit looking back. So I'm here today just to tell you and to give you a little bit of uh, hope 
<laughs> in life, in, in your dreams, in your vision, and whatever God has put on your heart, to from this point forward, stop looking back. Amen. Let God take you where you want to. You know what? Because He might be taking you to Egypt to rescue somebody. And all you got to do, and you might feel so inadequate, so unprepared, so unworthy, uh, but that's where He needs you. He, he doesn't need, He didn't use the Israelite army to kill Goliath. He used a shepherd boy that couldn't even put on the armor because it was too big for him. Couldn't even carry the sword. He used a shepherd boy and a rock and, some, and a slingshot. <coughs> he don't need anybody that... The Gideon army, he didn't use the, the 30,000 they had. He wanted to live down to 300. Mm -hmm. God don't need you if, if, you, if, you, if you've got all puffiness. God needs you inadequate, unprepared, unworthy. Because that's when His strength becomes, you know, your weakness becomes his strength. That's when the battle can be won. So what I'm telling you is, in this class, I know that each one of us have started to plow. We have started in one way, shape, or form, whether it's in our own well-being, whether it's coming, coming farther in our own life, in our own spiritual journey, in our own spiritual walk. We have all started to plow. And I truly believe 100% that God said to me today to tell you to quit looking back. It's time to keep going. He's got some amazing things planned for somebody through you. Because He's already done it to you. I know that because you're here. You know it. You might think you still have problems. There might be still stuff going on. But that's the only... Let me, you guys want to know the secret? You know what that is? If you've been coming to this class, and, and, and it's amazing that so many of you in here have started coming to church with us now. And some of you are, are faithful members of other churches, but... Here's the deal. If you've been coming to this class, God has already started to do amazing things through you and to you. Okay? And what's happening is, if you still have issues going on in your life that you're just thinking, oh, I just need this, I need this, that's the devil stealing your joy. Because when you come to Christ, it's all about joy. What's the devil's job? To kill, steal, and destroy. Not to kill you physically because he can't. Okay? He, he has to kill, steal, and destroy your joy. Follow me? And if He can keep you so consumed in everyday life and bills and, and family members and health, He has, has succeeded in robbing your joy and your faith in where God has taken you. One thing about Moses and all the trial and temptations he has when he decided to follow God, and even when a miracle of parting the Red Sea, you know, message and checkmate. In all three sides, they had nowhere to go. The Israel army behind them, you know, a mountain on this side or whatever. All they had in front of them was the sea. And they were all, oh my God, we're going to die. Why did you take us out of Egypt? We're going to die. God split the Red Sea so they could walk across. And then, and then the sea fell on the Pharaoh army, the Egyptian army and killed them all, right? Even after that miracle, the people start, you know, on down the line later on, they start, why did you take us out of Egypt? We have no water. Boom, God, Moses stuck a, uh, struck a rock with his rod, water came out. Why did you take us out of Egypt? We had no food. Next thing you know, manna from heaven quail. You know, even after all that, they murmured and complained. That's why, do you know that the actual promised land was not that far? From where they ended up? But because they, they did not have complete faith in God and murmured and complained, he left them in the desert for 40 years just walking around. When the promised land was here, he just left them walking around. Because, you know what I mean? But Moses stood strong. After all, think about how many times each one of us are a Moses. That's why this group's called Moses. That's why this group's called Moses. We're, yeah, we're all a Moses. But it's time now to, even in your life, with the, the complainings and the murmurings and the bickerings, to just keep your eyes on God. Because that's what Moses did. That's what Moses did. And the one time Moses didn't cost him from being able to answer the promise of God. He got to see it. God showed it to him. But he didn't get to enter. After all that, you know, but he still stayed faithful. And to this day, you know, in the New Testament, <coughs> the three people that, that the two people that were up on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, you know, were Moses and, Moses and Elijah. You know, Moses preached out character in the Bible. So let your Moses come out. Let your Joshua souls come out. And just understand that the problems that since you since you called and G, and, God, and God has said to you. Anita, Anita, or Lily, Lily, Shelby, Shelby, he's called your name, you know? You know what I mean? Since he's called that to you, and everything else around you is just the devil trying to steal it from you. So it's time to start walking in your calling, um, whatever calling that may be.
I, I strongly believe there might be a preacher, a pastor of a church in this room. There might be an evangelist that's going to one day be preaching to thousands of people, watching millions of souls come to, come, come to Christ, all because of a word you're saying. There might be a, a songwriter and that writes a song that, that somebody who's smoking on a joint at 3 o'clock in the morning hears that song, and the word of God comes through that song, and they become eternally saved. And that one day you'll be up in heaven and somebody will walk up to you and say, thank you, because of that dollar you gave the Moses group. It was used to go to, to send me on the mission, or to send someone on the mission trip, and I heard the word of Jesus preach for the first time, and I accepted him. Thank you. That's the calling. So, I wouldn't want to, I hope, I hope somebody got a word out of that. You know, um, my, my prayer tonight for each and every one of you is that you find the strength when you leave here to keep going. To, from this point on, that when you walk out of this door tonight, and you walk out of the door and you get in your car, that you tell God, I'm no longer looking back. Because when you get home, you're going to have that phone call. You're going to have that, that problem. You're going to have whatever it may be. And guess what you get to say? God, I'm not looking back. And you get to go forward. And God's going to give you the rock to put in a slingshot to slay the giant. But it's going to take faith, like what Jeff said. Jeff said, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff thought, it's going to take faith, and like what Jeff said, like Jeff said, to get you beyond where you're at now. So, with that, I will close. Uh, it's been exciting. Um, if anybody would like prayer, um, maybe you're at a spot in your life where you said, yeah, God, you know, you're right. I started following you one time, but, but I've looked back. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be Lot's wife. I don't want to be escaping up the mountain and, and oh, turn back to what I miss. I don't want to be that. I want to keep looking for Maybe it's a recommitment for you and what you're calling or what you're... What you're where you're going, I can pray with you. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a healing, something that's going on. Um, whatever it may be, if you'd like prayer, you can come up, um, and I will pray. Here's the deal. Like Paul said in the Bible, I am, I am the chief sinner of all sinners back in the day. And, you know, it, God gave me the power from the Holy Spirit to go to lay hands and heal people, lay hands on people and heal, and to lead people in the prayer of salvation, to give them eternal life. Then by gosh, He can do it for anybody. And uh, it's just, I'm so humbled by where He's brought me from. So please, if you come up here for prayer, come up expecting. Because my God is no small God. He's a God of healing. He's a God of power. He's a God of prosperity. You know? And the same power that lies within me, lies within Derry Walker, lies within Shonda, lies within Alicia, lies within LaDonna, lies within any of us, lies within you. And it's just about releasing it and letting God work through you. So, with that, look, you know what I'm so proud to Look, I see Kristen. She's been faithfully bringing her book. <laughs> Just okay. waiting for the day for LaDonna to start. <laughs> God bless you guys. We'll go ahead and close it from there. So if anybody needs prayer, just, just come on up. Um, thank you guys so much.